pray that you may have that you may be receptive hearts, Lord. Hearts that's ready to receive. But hearts that's also ready to make a difference. In Jesus' mighty name, Father. Stillness this morning. We ask right now, Father, that your will be done. We ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Father, we pray that this will not just be believers, Father God, that just comes to receive on a Sunday, but that their Christianity may reflect on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Father. That we have a people and a breed of people that is ready to make a difference in your city, Lord. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And the church of God will say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Family, I want to welcome each and every single one of you this morning to Crossover City Church. I hope you guys are blessed and well. And we are enjoying this cold weather in Kimberley that has just come upon us. I don't know how many of you have has encountered this. I know it's Bloomfontein's coldness. I don't know, so people who's from Bloom, I don't know, if you guys are from there, I just for the new man's You You go my name here? You understand? <laughs> because as far as I understand, I guess it's everything that comes from Bloom, we get here. Somehow, but it's good to see everybody in there. I can see people are going back to the jet jackets, right? The the the, the compasses. and other so we're going to be seeing a lot of winter colors, the apple colors, the dark, the light browns, right, and stuff like that. Mama Lo, is that the color season? Are the color for the season? It is that, right? It's the brown. And I saw a yellow somewhere. Is yellow one of the colors for the season? Who oh, you guys have got to keep focus on this stuff? Is it mustard? Oh, it's not yellow, it's mustard. Okay, gents, please let us get a hold of this. It is mustard. But family, I mean, we, 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 we busy with undercover this morning. How, how many of you have been blessed by the series so far? Right. How many has the series spoken to you? Amen. I think this is one of those series that when we started off, it was a very, it's a very difficult subject to talk about because it's not necessarily seen as a famous subject. But one of the things I really want to come and say this morning is the fact that this particular subject is one of those that we've seen the most breakthrough with so far. My wife has been over the last couple of weeks, and I don't know if some of the leaders can agree, I've had people come to me over and over and over again and just sharing with me on this topic. Literally, I've had people come to us and repeat, say, Father, I pastor, I've not come and taken the responsibility of understanding my cover. And I want to repeat for them. Because there's a lot of decisions in my life that I've made by myself without any spiritual guidance or spiritual counsel. And we've had people come to us in the series so far, and they just come and let it all down. And our heart in this is that you would really come and experience this as well. Why? When you are undercover, you experience God's protection, God's peace, and God's provision. Can we say that together? God's protection, God's peace, and God's provision. Vision. Amen. And that's the beautiful thing of being undercover. That regardless of what you do, none of us can escape it. What? You are undercover at home with an authority figure as a father. You are undercover at work with your bosses. With You are also undercover in the civil. So one of the things we spoke about is, you guys can just get that, there is four branches of cover and authority that we spoke of, four divisions of authority. Uh, Mr. Shandro came and he broke it so nicely down last week all in his army gear and he was explaining to us the dedicated authority in civil authority, okay? So the four legs we have there is civil authority, number two we have family authority, number three we have social authority which is our bosses and our teachers and number four we then have church authority and this morning we are dealing with church authority, okay? I'll let you guys have it for me there. So the one is civil, number two it's family, number three it's social, and number four it is church authority. And we find these authorities everywhere, and this morning I'm going to be touching on a couple of interesting subjects in regards to church. I'm going to be answering a couple of questions as well that I'm sure many of you have. 
or many of you had before, or many of you thought, and were afraid to ask. And this morning I really pray that this may come and it may bless you and it may really come and break it down. So this morning we're speaking of church authority, okay? So church authority is basically the ministry leader. Um, this is either your apostle, your prophet, your evangelist, your pastor, or your teacher. The Bible comes and it reveals to us that this is called the fivefold ministry. Okay? So say fivefold ministry. The fivefold ministry is your apostle, your pastor, your teacher, your evangelist, and your prophet. Okay? Um, so I want you guys to understand this. The Bible comes and also reveals to us, I'm going to show it to us in the scripture, that the Bible says that Jesus is the one who appoints this. So if we look at it very carefully, the apostle plants. Okay? The pastor protects. A shepherd protects the sheep. The evangelist brings sheep into the fold. Okay? The prophet sees vision for the ministry. And the teacher grows. Are we understanding how all of this works together nicely? Okay? So the apostle comes in as Apostle Atik came and we planted cross over city church, right? Then the pastor myself, that I have a dual role, which is as a pastor and a teacher, I'm here to come and protect the sheep and also to make sure that the sheep grow. Right? Just think of farming as a, as a shepherd comes in. That is the responsibility. The evangelist, anybody that has the calling of an evangelist upon their life, their responsibility is to go out, preach the gospel to those outside the church's building and bring those people into the flock into the church. That's what the evangelist brings. And then your prophet sees. Your prophet is the one that sees vision that God also comes and gives that insight to where the church needs to go. Amen? Amen. One of the things we also spoke about is honor and respect, right? We spoke about honor, um, the fact that we've got to make sure that we honor the position. So as long as your mother is your mother, she needs your honor. You can't step away from that, right? As long as your mother is your mother, she needs honor because she's in that position. But so, like I said, so it's honoring the position, but we respect the, we respect the, we respect the person, right? So I made the example of my wife and I said, I honor my wife, but I respect Sue. We got that? But sometimes we can come to the place where we might lose respect for the person, but we still got to honor the position. Somebody say amen. amen. We spoke about the fact that when it comes to church and leadership in all four of those spectrums, civil, family, social, and church leadership, that submission is unconditional. Somebody say submission is unconditional. But obedience is conditional. Okay? And the only place where obedience is conditional is if your leader, your boss, your father, or anyone who's in the social standing asks you to do something that will cause you to sin or anything against God's word. But beyond that, the Bible says you must submit and obey. Right? Can we go with us to Ephesians 4 verse 11 to 12? Just write this down. New King James Version. Ephesians 4 verse 11 to 12. I want us just to see what this is. The Bible says he himself gave. It's read together. Some two apostles, some prophets, some, some pastors there. So the Bible is saying that he himself, the Bible is speaking of Jesus Christ there. So Jesus is the one who assigned these, okay? Based on the calling that God is over our lives. Hebrews 5 verse 4. Hebrews 5 verse 4 is the next scripture. The Bible says, He Himself, which is Jesus Christ. It says, And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. So the Bible comes and shows us here that myself being a pastor, Pastor Laverna being a pastor, is based on the calling that God had over our lives. Trust me, um, when you can try and run away from it, you can't. It's there. It's in your being. And some of us might have thought, you know what? No, I'm called for business. I'm called for this. But Jesus personally came and he put his stamp on us. We never called ourselves. God came and he called us. And because of the, trust me, God equips you for the call that he's called you to. 
So in the fivefold, not everybody is pastors, not everybody is evangelists, prophets, apostles. We understand. God comes in, God calls them. Jesus himself appoints these people. Okay? And the Bible then says here, no man takes honor to himself, but he who is called by God. So nobody can come in and by themselves decide that I'm going to be a pastor now. Like with us, we had Apostle Peter Barnes, we had our covering, our network present, and we needed an apostle and men of God to come in and bless us as leaders that they see the calling and God has confirmed the calling of our lives and they have themselves laid their hands upon us and they set us apart for this great work. Okay. Because many of us are just living in the place, you know what, Pastor, I'm going to work this job. <laughs> I'm going to get paid. I'm going to pay my time. I'm going to take three holidays a year. But guess what? The calling. The calling is what God comes. So um, the next scripture we're going to is Hebrews 13 verse 17. Hebrews 13 verse 17. Obey those who? Obey those who? And be? For they? As those who must? Stop there. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, okay? For they must watch over your souls and they must give account. We as leaders should give, have to give an account to God one day. It's also saying let them do so with? Very interesting one to say. Let them let your leaders do so with joy and not with? For that would be? To who? Not for the pastor. Not for the leader. For you. Now I want us to look at this very carefully. Um, this particular portion of scripture here is, is basically showing us every believer's response to church. I'm going to come back to Hebrews now. Critical to Thessalonians 5, verse 12 to 13, New Living Translation. Thessalonians 5, 1 Thessalonians 1, 5, verse 12. Here it says, Dear brothers, honor those who are leaders in the Lord's work. For they work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Verse 13. So them great and wholehearted because of their and live peacefully with each other. Okay? So I want us to see that. Now if we can go back to Hebrews 13 verse 17. We have points on the guys I want you to look here. Number one it says obey. Yeah? Number two submit. Yeah? So it speaks about obedience which deals with our actions. And I spoke about it now the other week that you can be obedient towards your boss but you might not be submissive. And I get to that now. So obedience deals with your actions, right? Then it says, number two, submit, which deals with your attitude. So what am I trying to show you? That you can be obedient, but not submissive. Because your boss can say, go and do that. You say, just tell them what to do. But in your heart, you're busy cussing him out. And you might not yes. I can't stand it. Just tell me what to do. Let me get it over and done with Guess what? You're being obedient, but you're not being submissive. Because submission deals with your attitude. Where obedience deals with your actions. So, number three is for the watch of your souls, and they must give an account that. The next one that we see here, in the next scripture that we point out in Thessalonians, it speaks about honor, which speaks about our actions, our words, our thoughts, right? And then in, in Thessalonians, when you go there, it speaks about show great respect, which is number four. Okay? Show great respect. And number five, show wholehearted love for, this is for, so obey, submit, honor, show great respect, and show wholehearted love. This is for your benefit. And I want to, I want to, I want to share this with your family, um, that this is for your benefit. That the benefits of this can only be seen by when you receive God's peace, provision, and protection when you apply these to those who are over you. Because the problem here is this is the Word of God, and the Word of God is final over our lives. Amen? Amen. We can say what we want to say, but the Word of God is final, it is eternal. The reason why many of us are in the mess ups we are is because of our own doing. We trust ourselves too much. If we have to really do an account on our lives, we'll come and we'll see that, okay? So, look at this one. One of the things I've realized here is that people struggle with submission. Because most of the time, they are told to be submit after the but they are not taught to submit. 
You want to say people struggle with submission because most of the time they are told to submit but not taught to submit. I've got such great admiration um, for, for Muslims. Um, in regards to this topic of submission, submission to their prayer life. You don't tell no Muslim I can't pray right now. These guys have gone so far to allow the government to, to let them obey their times and their things. I have a friend of mine that plays rugby and he's a Muslim. And the, the, the sponsor of this particular rugby club was Castle. And because of his religion, he took the club to court because the club wanted to force him to wear Castle. 12 o'clock at schools. The schools are even more submissive to understand the importance of their religion. Where the schools let the guys go home early or from work while they must go and pray. And I have such great admiration for this when I see this because um, you must see when a Muslim converts to Christianity. Yeah. The growth yeah. that takes place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they understand something about submission that Christians don't get. When a Muslim gets saved, watch them outgrow a Christian who's been saved for 10 years in yeah. Because of their understanding of the scripture and their fear towards God. And when I saw this, I, I, I really struck with because they will stop and pray regardless of where it is. That guy will throw out his car and then he'll pray. Why? Because they understand something about submission. Submission keeps you humble. Because praying keeps you humble. Because you can't be too proud praying because you have to bow. No proud person can say yes. They bow because they understand in the bowing down is when pride gets killed. The Bible even comes and says in the book of Psalms, the proud cannot pray. <laughs> Why? Pray is renouncing what I know for what he knows. Pray is saying that I don't know it all, God, I'm submitting it to your will. The more prayerless you are, the more rebellious you will be. You know what I'm saying? You will struggle with submission. You will struggle with these things. You will be more rebellious because you don't pray much. Why? Prayer comes and it checks our will. You know what I'm saying this morning? If you struggle with submission, you must pray. I've seen of our leaders come into this church, but because they understand the topic of prayer, they understand submission. Because God will change your heart from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. If you struggle to submit at work towards your boss, you're going to get an immediate prayer. Because why? It is scripturally, and many of us, let's be real, we struggle with it at times, right? If you have this uncle or family member or civil or someone that is doing something that goes against what you stand for or you just don't like it, I'm trusting, I'm telling you this morning, pray. And the women now that I say, you don't just pray anything, you actually pray that God will bless them. Amen? Imagine you submit to the point of death where your own fears, Mr. Shandler, are submitted to the word of God. We see this with radical Islam. Imagine your submission runs that deep that you are willing, that your own fear of death leads you to say, I'm going to die because of God says so. That is another level. I'm willing to take my life because I trust God. Huh? And I just want to open up our minds this morning again, so that we can kind of ask ourselves what points a person to that, what takes a person to that point? Were you willing to give up your life because the word of God says so? Do we trust his word that much? Do we trust him that much? Look at Abraham when he had to sacrifice his son. He had to be obedient and submit. And just look at it. That his own fear is like he was at the point where, guys, let's be real. God asked him to kill his son. I don't think sometimes you think that the Bible is a fictional book, but God literally asked him, just think you have to take your son or your daughter, lay them in an altar cliff, and you have to kill them right there. Let's be real. Is our trust in God? We claim to trust Him. But are we really trusting Him to the point that we obey His word to that extent? 1 Peter 2, verse 6 to 12. 1 Peter 2, verse 6 to 12. You can just write that down. 
You don't want us just to see this. First Peter 2, verse 6 to 12. Are we there? We there? And one of the things I want us to see here is that this particular scripture of God comes and God actually starts showing us about doing things in our own strength. You saw it? 1 Peter 2, verse 6 to 12. Okay? And then the guy's got up there. You're just checking the Bible there for me now. 1 Peter 2, verse 6 to 12. As a believer family, one of the things that I want us to get out of our system is the moment you came to the Lord and you recognized Jesus Christ as your Savior, Savior, when you recognize Him as Lord over your life, you understand that one of the first things that should go out of your system is your desire to do things in your own strength. You know what I'm saying? Your desire to do things in your own strength, right? You know what it says here? For the scripture says, I see. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and a precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in him will never be put to. Um, can you go to me? Yeah, let me to the NIV. Can you go to me to the NIV? NIV, New International Version. Powerful, powerful. I'm placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem. Who is that cornerstone? Jesus. So when the Bible speaks about the cornerstone, the Bible is speaking about Jesus Christ. Say, I live under the stone in Zion, a chosen and a precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in him will never be put to? Shame. Those who trust in him will never be, will never be put to? Shame. Are the people who trust the Lord here? Yeah. Amen. So that promise is directed to you. Amen. The Bible says that God has what this life throws at you, you will never be put to? Shame. As long as you? Thank you. Verse 7. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the gold is rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they, the message, which is also what they want, destined for. Next scripture. But you are a, 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 a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's special possession. Guys, let us make that personal. Say so. You guys, you can make this personal. Say, I am a chosen people. I am Guys, Jesus Christ came and He saved us out of the sin we were so trapped in. And He brought us into this wonderful light. The light which is the Word of God. The next scripture says, Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Say, I am a people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your souls. Hmm. Live such a such good life amongst the pagans. Guys, listen up. Hear what the scripture say. You've got to live such a good life, life amongst non-believers, amongst people who are not Christian. Why? Though they accuse you of doing wrong, that they may see your good deeds. Huh? Mm. And glorify God on the day he possesses us. That people will glorify God because of your good deeds and because of your actions and because of your thoughts and your ways. It will not stop. The non believers look up. You might not see it, but they see. Will other people be able to glorify God because they said, man, just look at that. A woman of integrity. Mm. A woman of stature. A woman that praises the Lord. And I'm seeing this. You cannot be in a 
rebellious towards your boss and your pastor and still want to try and be separate to God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You cannot be rebellious towards your boss or your pastor and still claim to be something to God. One of the things I have to repent about, and I want us all to understand, how many of you guys experience a road rage? Let's be real, guys. Let's be real, guys. Pastor, you got the road rage. Guys, I'm going to be real, guys. One of the things I struggle with, and I'm going to be real, guys. Sort that stuff out. We really know that across the right? And it's even like this is not my friend. <laughs> I forget, no, guys. I don't know who else is in that same space, Father God is coming. I'm trying to show you the other. Okay, it's open to me. But you cannot not be obedient towards the civil society, what's happening outside, and still claim that you want to be submitted to what God. If His words say you must be submitted to the civil society, what's happening? Amen. 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 <laughs> You're like, I have guesting, I don't do SNBC, why was I still free? In your family, get those stuff so far. I'm trying to show you that you cannot be submissive towards God and be rebellious towards your pastor or your boss in the world. Why? God doesn't say, oh no, look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. What does it say? 1 Peter 2, verse 17. Respect. 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 Not just people that you agree with. Yeah. Or not just people that is no. saved. Or not just people that is in alignment with you. Or not just people that think that you think that that's the right vision for life. It says what? Respect. Yeah. That means the guy on the streets. Mm. That means the person begging. Yeah. That means the cashier. Yeah. That means your boss. Yeah. That means your mother, your father. That means your husband, your wife. That means your kids. Yeah. Respect. Respect everyone. And I want to say this for family. Why? You cannot love God and not love who He puts in place. Sure. Mm. Because remember I said it's not just church leadership, but civil everywhere. God chooses the leader. Yeah. You might not agree with the president, God plays him. Yeah. Remember, we say that he God made a choice, but his behavior might not be God. Yeah. We see it in scripture. So God plays the soul. Pharaoh, God plays Pharaoh. Yeah, I revealed it now the other week. Yeah. But their behavior wasn't God. Yeah. Because they are still people, right? But I want us to understand this family. That you cannot love God and not love who he puts in place. Yeah. Myself as the pastor, I oversee crossover and I see what others can't see. Within the church, within leadership, within people. You might come and we can't be I I must be God. People will go, oh, God shows your overseer because he oversees things you can see. God gives your pastor and your leader prophetic insight to your life. You might not know it, but when God places them as an overseer, he gives them prophetic insight into your life that you might not know. I love so, I love so much love many of our members that just come to us and they're like, hey, pastor, you know what? I like this girl. But, you know, one, two, three, how do I know about it? Guess what? God comes and gives your pastor prophetic insight because once you release that, your pastor goes and he lays this before the Lord and God comes and he gives an insight into your life, into the next job. A week ago, we said with another lady that came to us and she's like, I need to make financial decisions in my life because I have this business opportunity, what can we do? And God rightly allowed us to give us prophetic and spiritual insight into the next step that she has to take in her life. We get this. And this is the kind of thing that we need to understand in the Christ to understand in your cover. How many of you guys have ever went and spoken to any one of the leaders in the church? Mm. Leaders, can you guys put this hand for me? Can the leaders put this hand for me? Can the leaders put this hand for me? Some of them aren't here, but I want you guys to look at it. Look at the leaders. And I want you to look around. How many of you guys have ever contacted me? Sit down and have some coffee. Share your heart, share your story, share your journey. I'm trying to show you that right here in front of you we have gold. But you're not making use of it. You are struggling alone because you're not making use of the guidance that's given to you. You are suffering alone. 
because you do not tap into the wisdom that is in you. How I encourage you? What you see around you, make you see. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He remains in the place of honor and respect. Why? Women need love. You know what I'm saying? Women need love. Men can go without it. A thing a man can't go without is respect. You know what I'm saying here? My wife will tell you in the beginning of our marriage, my wife is like, love, love, love. But why? She needs love. You'll never say a woman come to you and say, no man, I don't, you don't respect me. <laughs> A woman says, amen, I need love. Why? The Bible says the husband must love her. So God made sure that the void that she's going to need of that will be supplied by the... But a man needs respect. And this brings me to the next point. That a man is in positional authority. You know what I'm saying? Positional authority. Because God placed him in the position as the head of the home. The wife has 
influential authority. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The husband has positional authority. The wife has influential authority. The husband is the head. The wife is the neck. Because the neck, will, the head will be useless just being there. The head won't be able to move. The head won't be able to know direction unless the head is influenced by the neck. Where to turn. I hope you are seeing this. Mr. Shanville is the head of his home. He's in positional authority. Tanya is the neck. She's influential authority. She influences the head. I've never seen a man influenced as much as a, as a woman can influence him. I don't know if you've seen that. Men can lose their heads. Men can lose their morals and their values because of the power that a woman has when it comes to influence. I've never seen influence as much as a woman can do. Women, please understand your powers and operate very carefully. You know, as, that, as, as, as Spider-Man comes and he says, with great power comes great responsibility. So please make sure that you influence correctly. Because he might be there, but trust me when I'm saying you guys can influence. I've seen guys throw away so much because of a woman. Amen. Thank you, family. Let's give them a round of applause. Hallelujah. Let us just celebrate her. Hallelujah, Mrs. Cook. One of the goals of the enemy is not just to offense or to take you out, but it's to take you out of position from submission. You know what I'm saying? One of the goals of the enemy is not just to take you out, but let you fall, bring offense, but to take you out of the position of submission. I've never seen people lose their cool as much as when they get angry. Have you seen how, how someone re reacts when they get angry? Then they all of a sudden they lose submission, their attitude nah? towards the person. I had to repent from it because I've seen it when, when, when we saw all of the things happening in South Africa. I would come and we'd make some such remarks. Our president is just stupid. How can he do this? Let's be real. He's a jerk. How can he do this kind of stuff? And I said, the cop demand man, kick net wat se Guys, I had to repent. Because the Bible says we have to submit towards our leaders. My heart wasn't right. And we've got to make sure that those around us, if you want to make sure that you are under God's peace, provision, and protection, and as a believer, that's why the scripture comes and shows that those outside look at our attitudes and our ways, and they will give God glory because of us. How can you expect to make a difference in the world if you are just like them? If you entertain the talks that they entertain, because you know what it says? Why? Without submission, there'd be chaos. Without submission, there'd be chaos. Imagine if people were not submissive towards authority. We are seeing this in the States right now. With all Black Lives Matter march, and the people are saying, defund the police. There is so much chaos happening with the police and the people within the place. Why? People are blatantly going out in front of police and trying to provoke police to react upon them so that they can have their voice heard. But still, their hearts are not submissive to authority. And guess what we are seeing? Chaos. Cities burning down. Because as much as you want your point to be heard, there's a way to do it. You know what I'm saying? There's a way to do it. Verse 16. First um, Peter 2 verse 16. As we come to the end of it. 1 Peter 2 verse 16. For you are free, yet you are God's slaves. Other translation says God's children, God's servants. But you know what it says there? So don't. Don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Just because we are under grace, let us make sure that we do not use that grace as to say, ah, I'm going to do this because God will forgive me anyway. No? Sometimes we have that. And that's the kind of things I want us to see. Because you know what it comes and it shows us there? You have to be obedient in and out of season. Why? I made a video last night on Facebook where I said, the key to your next instruction from God is based on the obedience from the last instruction from Him. Some of you can't hear God because He knows you won't obey. 
Why? When we pray, it's not just about us speaking, it's about God answering. But when God answers, God gives instructions. God never answers without giving, not giving you instructions. He always says, go here, do that, speak to. But the problem with many of us is, why must God speak to you if you're not going to listen? And do what He asks of you. So sometimes we can't hear God. God, what do I do next? What job do I do next? Where do I go next? You cannot hear God simply because you are not obedient to the very thing right now. It's like Apostle Ati revealed in his book that is still available for 200 bucks that you guys want. Why Mary didn't this miscarry? One of the things he revealed there, he says that every single year people want new dreams and new visions and new goals. He says, God convicted him. Why would God give him new visions and new dreams? God spoke to him last year and showed him, I'm not going to give you anything new because all of the other dreams and stuff that I've spoken to you about, you have not fulfilled yet. So, so many of us are sitting with so many dreams and visions and we are pregnant with so much, but we have not completed nothing. So why must God give you something new if you have not completed the old? The Bible is showing us you do not use your freedom as an excuse. The key to your next instruction from God is based on your obedience from the last instruction from Him. Hallelujah. Verse 17 comes and it says, respect everyone. It says, honor everyone. The word honor means great respect, great esteem. And one of the things we find here is that honor is the fruit of submission. You know what I'm saying? Honor is the fruit of submission. And I want to say this right to your family. God can see through vain praise. Ouch. God can see through vain praise. God can see if you just want to kuza kuza your boss here on the one side because you want position and everything and everything. God sees all of that stuff. God sees that. Will you divide scalp if you stop with men say and Alice? God sees everything. You know what I'm saying this morning? God can see through vain praise. Now I just want to thank my leader right here, but God knows in your heart you are not speaking from an authentic place. Why? Because words are spirit. The words you, can, you speak are spirit. The Bible shows us that Jesus says, the words I speak are life and spirit. So watch the words that we speak. And God comes in and he sees it right there. There's a spirit behind the words that you mention. Because why? Sometimes we have the power to disregard those we need because we want to be honest with what we feel. We have the power to disregard those we need because we want to be honest with what we feel. I feel this way right now, so I'm going to push those I need away. But here I'm going to with this. A submitted heart will stop the words before it comes out. <laughs> Let's be honest, many of us think things, eh? And you think it in your heart. Let's be real. That's what happens towards your boss, towards your wife, towards whoever. But a submitted heart will stop the words. The moment you come there, you know your own. <laughs> a submitted heart stops the words before they come out. Because we know sometimes when we are in circles, I've no, I've, I know people who love to gossip. And they'll come and try and hear things by you and use the excuse. No, I just want to pray for you. What's wrong? But it's actually to continue a story. So we've got to get to that thing. They want stories for prayer. <laughs> Maybe we've seen that, you know. They want stories for prayer. Yeah, my but it's not thrown from an authentic place. Another thing I've realized about submission is submission will heighten your sensitivity. You know what I'm saying? Submission will heighten your sensitivity. My daughter knows the moment she's naughty. Cliff, you have this very good. The look. Come on, man. Ilza, you know this look. There's just a look. The boys are so sensitive to know that the moment they do something wrong, dad just doesn't even have to open up his mouth. He just looks. The look already tells them what to do. The look already prompts them to not do it. The look already sets their heart in motion. Submission will heighten your sensitivity to things. Verse 17, hear what it says there. Quickly go to verse 17. 1 Peter 2 verse 17. The Bible comes and shares, says here, respect one another. Another portion says there, love your Christian brothers and sisters, right? Love your Christian brothers and sisters. A portion of scripture that I love so much and that's what makes this crossover so real. That's why I encourage you guys. Midweek service we have at the Gape Love Coffee Shop and in Rodapan, 
We have one at Pascodia High School at six every single Wednesday. If you want to grow, people who attend these midweek services grow more than these here. But you're also going to be able to grow with the people around you with fellowship and get to know one another. Why? The Bible comes and shows us here when Jesus Christ, Pastor Laverno, um, the Bible says that when he, after he was resurrected, his body still had wounds. Nah? Because the Bible said that doubting Thomas came and he asked, are you real? Then Jesus says, put your finger through my wound, which shows you that his resurrected form still had wounds. Here I'm going to with this. But the Bible also shows us another portion of scripture. The Bible says that, but his bones were intact. Because the Bible says when he died, no bones had to be broken. Which meant that his bones were intact, which meant that he was secured, but he still carried the wounds here by the side. What I'm trying to show you guys right now is that it's important that when we walk around with our wounds, that we go around, we can be secured and fulfilled, but still have the wound. Why? We need to relate with people. Jesus was able to show them that, hey, I might be resurrected, but I still have wounds to show you that I've walked the road that you are walking with. Sometimes people can't relate with you because you're not real, because you want to act as if you got it all together. But I'm here to tell you guys this morning that you've got to show your wounds. You've got to show the scars because it tells a testimony of being real. That we all struggle. We all go through our ups and our downs. Why? We connect at wounds. If you want to connect with people, you connect with them at your weakness. Because the moment you try and connect with them at your strength, it becomes a competition. We connect at the wounds. Many times we are too grounded and critical. Many times we want to say we are real. And yourself and me, we can sometimes allow our life lessons to change our belief in God. We can allow our life lessons to change our belief in God. You know, that person hurt me, so I'm never going to trust anyone again. Now I'm never forgiving anyone again. Look what forgiveness done to me. It's changing our belief in God. Because God said you must forgive, right? Sometimes we can allow our experiences with other people to become the wisdom for our lives above the Word of God. All of this motivational talks and stuff we listen out there, Family, I want to encourage you and I want to guide you that many of the stuff is so centered around self. You've got to do you. You've got to be you. Lift yourself up. Don't worry about those. Uh -uh, the Bible says we have to worry about those. No. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying this morning? You do you. No, 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 no. We've got to do community. It's kingdom. This motivational talks, they sound good. Why? Because they intrigue your five senses. They make you feel good about you, but it's not kingdom. It's not the gospel. And it's about time we better start getting this gospel and kingdom principles in place because why? What do you want to do in heaven one day? You want to do you. When all of us are there doing us, we, 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 we're doing God. You want to do you while you're in heaven. But you get what I'm saying. That's what the Bible says, biblical instruction before. Leaving earth, because why on earth as it is? Come on. God is preparing us for eternity with Him. Amen. And I want to encourage those this morning as well. Submission helps you understand that even if your old boss or your old leader upset you or done something that's not right towards you, you still got to be submitted to them. Why? Because they are still a leader. And they are still an authority figure. What am I trying to say? You can be fully sold into your new leader without complaining about the old one. I can't tell you, Uncle Mel, how much people I've encountered that came to me and complained about their old pastor. Because it's just making me think the moment you start getting closer to me and you start seeing my flaws and you start seeing my shortcomings, that you're going to start complaining about me in the next two months. You know what I'm saying? I'm very cautious of that. Why? Make sure that you do not have that where you continuously, don't get me wrong, a concern is fine that you can share with your new leader. But if it becomes a constant thing, your heart is not in the right place and you are not submitted because your previous leader is still an authority figure. Yeah. I've seen pastors that have done wrong, but I've seen pastors that in the wrong they've done, they've done so much more right. Yeah. That pastor might have stolen money from the church, but over a thousand people came to salvation through his ministry. He just had a, a shortcoming or he fell short there or he sinned there. But guess what? There was still so much blessings that came from his ministry. Don't let us 
try and do that because otherwise, how must God treat us then? Every single time we flop or we make a, dis- a, a mistake that we want to come and crucify people, must God crucify us as well that we want to crucify people? No, but He can't. Just look. No, 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 no. God showed you mercy. Why don't you show mercy? God gave you 10 chances. Why don't you also give 10 chances? I'm going to get to this right now. It's the same thing with the church. You can celebrate your new church without criticizing the old one. You're near there by that old church. They've done this. They've done this. Guys, we had crossover. We are here to complete. We understand that there's certain churches that might not be doing things properly. But let us focus on what we need to focus on. We focus on this community. We pray for the other communities. We pray that God will lift them up. Why? We can't do this work alone in Kimberley. Crossover can't have all Kimberley's people. That's why we need all of these other churches. We are not here to compete. We are here to complete. We are the kingdom of God. We are the church. We are one. Somebody say amen. amen. And we need to understand that family. Why? Submission does not ignore the problem. But it chooses the reaction. Submission does not ignore the problem, but it chooses the reaction. I see the problem right there, I choose my reaction. I see the problem right there, I choose my reaction. It's, your, it's, it's, it's all in your attitude, family. It's all in your attitude. I remember with my previous, my previous church, my previous pastor, there was once somebody came in, they spoke something from the stage and I never agreed with it. I never came to my pastor and I came and told him, yeah, no, you're wrong. How can you just allow this kind of thing? This is heresy. The doctrine is wrong. No, no, no. I called him. I said, Pastor, I heard the scripture and I heard the way they brought out this context. Um, I'm reading the scripture this way. Is there something I might have missed? Can you please explain to me what this person might have said? I might have missed it. I never came there and said, Pastor, that person's wrong. You are wrong for lying that person. Pastor, what was the perspective? When I heard it, then I told him, you know what? I saw the scripture in this way. But I hear what you're saying. I'm going to go pray about it. And I'll come back to you in a week's time, and then we'll sit together, then we can try and... Guess what? I still kept a submitted heart. I never came there. How on earth can this pastor allow this kind of thing? Can't he think for himself? No, 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 no. Submission. Submission. It's not to say that the pastor... If, when you do things wrong, family, there's, there's a portion of the scriptures that comes and shows us with Korah, ne? and with, uh, with Aaron and Miriam. Ne? It's Miriam, it was with Moses. Yes, yes, Aaron and Miriam where Moses went and he married someone outside of the tribe, but God said, you mustn't marry anyone outside from a foreign land. And he went and he married a woman from Africa. And because of that, it was wrong based on the laws that was written down. Miriam and Aaron went to Moses and they went to go and rebuke him for something that was right. But the problem was the attitude towards it. The attitude was not right because Moses was still the leader. And when the attitude was not right towards Moses, guess what God done? God struck Miriam down with leprosy. For something she saw, but this leader, this pastor is wrong. And Aaron was the high priest. But they were rebuked by the Lord because of their attitude. Watch what you do with God's anointed. Your attitude counts all the time. Why? As much as you are submitted to them, they are submitted to God. God will deal with them. There's a way things get done. If you don't like something someone done with you, you go to your operational head within your team. If you don't like what the operational head dealt with, you then go to the, one of the church leaders. If the church leader cannot help you, the church leader will then go to the elders here in the church. If the elders cannot deal with it, the elders will then come to me as the pastor and we will deal. If it's way too big to me, we go to our oversight. Protocol. Protocol. But we understand what? Submission. No? We understand protocol and order in this house at Crossover. And this is one of the things I wanna, as, I, as I'm ending off this morning, the prophetic word I want to give to each and every single one of you this morning. In your next season, stop expect, expecting people to change. The prophetic word for everyone here this morning, in your next season, stop expecting people to change. You need to adjust your attitude towards them. The adjustment comes from you. Stop expecting people to change. The adjustment comes from you. Guys, you will not see me near a snake because I know a snake. And if I see a snake, I'm not near the snake. <laughs> that kind of sums it up to you. Stop expecting people to change. You need to make the adjustment. No? 
You've got to manage your expectations. You've got to manage your expectations. Sometimes many people like myself, my wife has to rebuke me many times, we have such, we always expect the worst from people. And even with a good heart, we can have the wrong expectations. Even with a good heart, we can have the wrong expectations. But one of the things I had to come to over the last year, Cliff, is that God has placed us there as leaders to come and guide people according to His Word and His ways. If the people do not listen to our instructions, as a shepherd, I've got to release them and allow them to fall so that they can experience the consequences. But guess what? As a shepherd, we still have to be there afterwards to pick up the pieces and rehabilitate the people back into their full health. Amen? So what am I trying to show you guys here? It's, 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 it's quite a tough one for us pastors, right? As that saying goes, <laughs> It's just like that. Because I, I encourage you, family. I mentioned to our operational heads yesterday, your, your submission is personal. Stop basing your attending church and your coming to church and your being rocking up early on meetings or at places based on other people's walk with God. No, I don't have to come early. Everybody else comes late. It shows you integrity. What integrity is? Who are you when nobody's looking? Come on, somebody. Stop basing your Christianity and your walk and your submission towards the Lord based on other people. You are here because God wants you here. And God said you must be submitted to this house. And God said you must follow in the ordinances and the obedience of what this house requires. It's not based on other people. I must come and I must be here early to pray. I must come and I must attend the meeting. I must come and God said I must come. Brandon, now that they just randomly is like, Pastor, you know what? We had a meeting and he's like, Pastor, I'm going to clean the toilets. That's what God showed him. Why? His submission is personal before the Lord. It's not based on anybody else's doing. Sometimes the problem with us, we don't have integrity. We want to serve God based on what other people are doing. I'm not going to that meeting because the five people already canceled. What? Integrity. Why? You sow what you reap. You don't sow where you reap. Ha. The Bible says you sow. You sow. It doesn't say where you reap. Nah. You reap what you sow. But it says what, not where. And I want to wrap this up, family, by saying submission isn't supposed to be easy. It's designed that way. Ask Jesus. It's one of those instruments to make us more like Christ. If submission bothers you so much, it cannot be compared to what Jesus Christ had to submit. Why? Ultimately, we follow in his footsteps. When he had to endure that lashes, when he had to endure the whoop, when he had to endure the hit, when they just put that crown of thorns on his head, when they're interrogating him, when he was in that garden and he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Your submission cannot be compared to God's. But, pa, but Father, they want me to be their time at church. Have you died? But Father, they want me to forgive that person. Have you died? But Father, they say I must make right with my children. Have you died? But Father, they say I must love everyone, but I just don't. Have you died? Our submission cannot be compared to Jesus Christ's submission. Next time we complain, just think of Jesus. Have you died? No. You're still alive. Don't worry. He's not, he's not all right. Don't worry. <laughs> Hallelujah, family. Once you keep your eyes on Jesus, You'll be able to forgive, love, and submit. Why? Jesus set the standard. And not you or me. And because if we claim to be Christians, the Bible says Christianity is what? Christ followers. That's what it is. We follow in His ways. Amen? Let us just stand up on our feet and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray as this word went out this morning, Lord, that you would come and work in our hearts, Lord. That you, we would come and submit to your final authority, Father. That we'd be obedient to your delegated authority, Father God. Because we cannot submit. We cannot submit to you and not submit to whom you've put in place. I pray that you may check our attitudes, Father God. I pray that you may check our obedience, Father God. 
I pray that our hearts may be set on you, Father. I pray that you may heal those hearts whose hearts are not healed. I pray that you may work on those people's minds that are struggling with this topic, Lord. Whether it's in their family, whether it's in business, whether it's at home, whether it's at school, whether it's civil, whether it's at church, Father God. We pray for a people to be submitted to your ways and your will. We pray for a people that will understand the benefits of the submission. Because it's through the principles that you've put in place that will unlock the blessings that we've awaited, Father God. And I pray right now that this world, as it went out, it will not just be information, but be transformation. I pray that this morning we'll see more people involved in our teams at church. We pray that we will not just have people that attend crossover. We'll have people that serve here, Father God. We'll have people that come in here on a Sunday morning, an hour before the time, and lays down their sacrifice before the Lord. We'll have people that comes and sows and gives and tithes into this vision, Father God. We'll have people, Father God Almighty, that attends midweek service, Father God. We'll have people that say, you know what, I see we need some more people in the kids' church. Let me go and help out. We'll have people that will raise up their hands, Father God, and be submitted to the vision of Crossover City Church that is ultimately submitted to the vision that you have for your kingdom, Father. And I thank you for what you've done this morning. And I so much more thank you for what you're about to do. I pray that there'll be an unlocking in the heavens, Father God, that we'll see an overflow in this presence, Father God. We'll see an overflow if people in our hearts. We'll see people, Father God, who submitted to inviting people to church, Father God, that they will go and make sure that they can invite people to church to come and experience the life-giving messages that you come and you reveal to us, Father. I pray that they'll invite people to come and be part of a family, Lord God. That they'll invite people, Father God, to come and experience salvation. That only Jesus Christ can save them from their misery and their and their mishaps, and that they don't have to do life alone. In Jesus' mighty name, we come this morning and we say, amen and amen. Thank you, family.